Hey, this is Chris, and this is MMA for you. Uh, I'm going to be doing my predictions for Bellator 159, Caldwell versus Timinglo, which happens on July 22nd. But before I get into that, I'd like to plug my own author's website at www.chrismoldon.com. I am an author specializing in the fancy genre, and uh, there are multiple works of mine that you can buy. Um, so you can buy my first novel, an action adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom for $4.99 on PDF format uh, at uh, www.chrismodon.com or if you have some sort of e-reader like a Kindle, you can buy an elf of Amazon.com. And for just $1.99, you can buy my short stories <coughs> and my short story collections. So. Uh, there's the Land of the Woodsman Statues, which is a like a horror adventure uh, fantasy type uh, short story that I'm actually trying to make into a full blown full blown novel. Uh, my horror collection, which is a collection of uh, three different horror short stories, and my fantasy fable collection, which is a collection of four of my fantasy fable. Uh, short stories. So, uh, on to this card. Um, you know, this card is going to just really not fall by the wayside per se, but like, you know, I can't imagine this card's that advertised. I, I can't imagine that, you know, there's some names on here like Melvin Gallard, David Rickles, Darren Caldwell's building some momentum, but otherwise, um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think this is a card that's going to get a lot of viewership. Um, it's too bad in a sense because there are some good prospects on this card. Darian Caldwell, in my opinion, is one of the best prospects at, uh, Bantamweight. Yeah, pretty good fight between Gallard and Rickles. Vichel versus Sanchez. Sanchez is actually a pretty decent prospect in his own right. Vichel. Um, very experienced, very, very solid fighter. Got a pretty good light heavyweight prospect fight between Felipe Lenz and Gamay Viana. And then um, you got some women's fights here too with uh, some prospects here. Bruna Allen versus Jessica Middleton. And Emily, uh, I, th I think it's Ducati. Uh, that's, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Versus Bruna Vargas. Um, I got to say though. Bruna Allen and Bruna Vargas really show that Bellator, when it, as far as their signings go for uh, for the women fighters, uh, they're definitely going for looks. Um, so, yeah. Otherwise, uh, Gaston Renault is actually on the prelims. He's pretty good. Uh, pretty good prospect. Chuka, Chuka Willis is actually on the prelims, and he's actually a pretty good prospect himself. Uh, Chris Harris, uh, he's pretty good, 6-0. and um, So yeah, let's get started. Okay, in the main event, we have Darian the Wolf Caldwell versus Joe the Juggernaut Taiminglo. Caldwell, 9-0, and undefeated record, 1 win by Tico, 4 wins by Sub, 28 years old. Uh, he's 5'10", trains at a power MMA. He's a strong wrestler, all the accolades you'd want. Uh, really strong in the scrambles, too. Has some good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills, actually. Good at taking the back. Um, and his stand-up is improving. Man, he demolished Joe Warren. I mean, the dude German suplexed Joe Warren, took his back, and it was it. You know? I mean, this guy is <clears throat> really good. Um, especially with his wrestling <coughs> and his overall ground skills and it just his athleticism. Joe Tamanglo, 22, <coughs> excuse me, 22 and 6 record with one draw, 5 wins by KO or TKO, 11 wins by sub. He also has 2 losses by KO or TKO and 2 losses by sub. 32 years old, he's 5-4 on a 3 fight win streak. Uh, he's actually shown to be pretty solid. Just recently beat Soran Kakai. Showed good stand-up. He's always pushing forward. His overall Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are quite solid. Uh, his takedown defense actually isn't too bad. I don't think he can defend takedowns from Caldwell, though. Um, his overall grappling skills are actually pretty solid. He's, you know, when, when he first came into Bellator, he's just like some guy that's there. 
Uh, now, I, I think he made the drop to Bantamweight, so that really helped him. Um, and yeah, Joe Patemangle actually looks like a pretty solid fighter these days. Uh, with that said, though, I don't think that's enough to beat Dorian Caldwell. <laughs> Dorian Caldwell is just... His wrestling is next level. His overall ground game is really good. I can see him getting a takedown and then uh, getting some sort of dominant position towards a finish. I'm going to call a submission here. Um, I'm going to go even further with Dorian Caldwell and say that, you know, I'm a big fan of Eduardo Dudu Dantes, who's the champ Bellator Bantamweight champion right now. I think he's just keeping the belt warm for Dorian Caldwell at this point. Uh, I am that high on Dorian Caldwell. So, yeah, Dorian Caldwell by sub. <laughs> Next fight after that. Melvin the Young Assassin Gallard fights David the Caveman Rickles. Uh, Gallard, 32 and 16 record with two draws and two no contests. 21 wins by KRTK, two wins by sub. That's just two losses by KRTK, nine losses by sub. 33 years old, he's 5 9 on a three fight losing streak. Most recently getting knocked out by Derek Campos. Uh, before that, he lost to Brandon Gertz. Before that, Justin Gaethje. Um, at his best, he does have good stand-up, particularly heavy hands. He has this in-and-out style of striking. He hasn't shown it as late. Actually, he has some pretty good knees, too. Um, man, I gotta say, though, his takedown defense looks like it's deteriorating at this point. I mean, Brandon Gertz is able to take him down all day. Um... And keep him down too. He, he his ability to get back to his feet when he's taken down looks non-existent now. It's particularly Gillard's always been kind of weak off his back, and his chin just isn't very good too. It's not that he gets knocked out a lot; it's only t twice, but he gets dropped and or wobbled a good amount of his fights. David Rickles, 17 and four record with one no contest. Five wins by KRTK, six wins by sub. He also has three losses by KRTK. 27 years old, he's 5'11". Uh, he actually has some pretty good stand-up. He's always pushing forward. Uh, his overall Brazilian disc skills are pretty good. He hasn't got to show him too much as of late. I remember when he was um, starting out on Bellator. He was just triangle choking everyone. So he was always pretty good off his back. Um, his stand-up defense though, definitely needs some work. Uh, with that said, though, I gotta go David Rickles to win this one by K or TKO. Um, while Gillard could catch Rickles, um, I see it more likely that Rickles catches Gillard much more. <coughs> Excuse me, and eventually gets the finish. So, yeah, David Rickles by K or TKO. Next fight after that, Emmanuel Almatador Sanchez fights Daniel the Weasel Vigil. Sanchez, 13 and 2 record, one win by KO, five wins by sub. 25 years old, he's 5'9, trains out of Rufus Sport. He's on a three-fight win streak. Over some pretty good guys too. Um, he beat like Justin Lawrence, Daniel Pineda. Um, they're all like split decisions, so they could have gone either way. But um, he ended up getting the victories over those guys. His stand-up's actually pretty solid. He uses combinations well. His overall Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are good. He's a good scrambler. People take his back actually a good amount of times. He's able to scramble back out of that. <coughs> One of his problems though is his takedown defense. He kind of concedes the takedown far too much for my liking and gets a little too content off of working off of his back. Um, he's fine. Daniel Pichel was it? <coughs> Jeez, 36 and nine record. Five wins by KO Tico, 21 wins by sub. It also has five losses by KO Tico and three losses by sub. 31 years old, he's 5'10. Just a really well rounded guy and a particularly good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills, too. Stand up solid. Just re if I'm not mistaken, he just recently beat uh, Karakanian, right? Yeah. Um, dropped him, too, in the first round. Uh, solid stand up. Was wobbling Patricio Pitbull Ferre. Outstruck uh, Pat Curran. Um, his wrestling skills are solid too. Um, he can take, you know, he has just solid wrestling and good overall Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. Uh, I like Sanchez. Uh, I kind of, you know, I started to pick him to win a lot more as of late. Um, but Vital, man, this guy is just really good. I mean, I'm talking like. 
If he's in the UFC, he'd be top 11 to 15, maybe even be able to break into that top 10. Um, that's that's honestly how, how good I think that Vital is. Um, um, you know, Sanchez is tough, but yeah, I gotta go with Vital to win this. I think he can outstrike him and outgrapple him, to be, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna go with Daniel Vital by decision. Because Sanchez is tough, though. Next fight after that, Felipe Montreal Lins fights Guillaume Viana. Viana, 7-2 and two record, 5 wins by Kertico, 2 wins by Sub. 30 years old, he's 6'4", and a finisher. He actually has some pretty good boxing, he uses a jab ball, a lot of straight punches with him, you know? Um, yeah, he doesn't have like a, you know, it's a pretty rudimentary game, but it's, a, it's efficient, you know? Uh, his offensive take availability, especially from the clinch, is actually pretty good. He's shown pretty good ground and pound as well. Uh, Lenz, 9-1 and one record, 4 wins by Kertiko, 3 wins by Sub. 30 years old, he's 6'2", trains out of Nova Uniao Kimura. He last fought in July of 2014 against Kelly and Nunson, and he uh, injured his knee quite badly in that fight. Um, he actually has some good boxing in the sense, but he kind of throws a bit wildly. Uh, he is particularly heavy-handed, though. Um, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are good, but his takedown defense uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, this one's actually pretty tough to call, and I think both these guys are pretty good. Even though they're 30 at light heavyweight, they, I think you can still consider these two prospects. Um, excuse me. Uh, I like Gary Viana here, though. He just has, he can rely on the takedown game if necessary. Um, and his stand-up's pretty good, too. I think Linz is a bit more dynamic than Viana, so um, that should be really interesting. Um, but overall, <coughs> I like Guillermo Viana here to win this. Uh, I'll go by, well, he's finished all his opponents so far. Um, I'm going to have to go with the finish then. I'll go K or TK, man. Yep. Okay, next fight after that, Bruna Ellen fights Jessica Middleton. So I, I want some, actually one fight of both of them. Jessica Middleton, no pro MMA bouts, 2-0 as an amateur. She has one TK win as an amateur and one decision win as an amateur. 20 years old, she's 5'7". Uh, <clears throat> so I say like she has some sort of Muay Thai background. Some sort. <laughs> um, so, her stand-up looked good. She looks like she's really uh, looking to achieve the clinch. Because when I saw her fight, she was trying to get the clinch, uh, work uh, a lot of offense from there, and work a lot of clinch takedowns from there. Overall, grappling looked pretty decent, too. Bruna Ellen, 2-0, undefeated record. I mean, still raw, but... Um, Ellen has one win by TKO and one win by decision. She last fought in August of 2015. Also very raw. Um, her stand-up's decent, but kind of sloppy. Like, she'll kind of just throw a kick and get countered, for example, or something like that. You know, it, it's still really sloppy. So her defense standing isn't very good. Her offensive takedown ability actually isn't too bad. She's good at catching kicks and getting takedowns from there. And actually has shown some good ground and pound. Uh, this was actually tough for me to call. Um, I'd imagine they want to promote and push Bruna Allen, get, him some, get her some wins, but she is so just, like I said, so green, so raw. Both of them are, really. Um, I'll go with Bruna Allen to win this by decision. Can't say I'm 100%. I'm not super confident with this pick because, like, both of them are quite flawed. Count of the prelims. I did actually want to uh, video both of these uh, fighters. Emily Gordina uh, Ducati fights Bruna Vargas. Vargas has a 2-0 undefeated record. 1-1 by sub, 1-1 by decision. She last fought in April of 2014. Uh, she's also really raw, you know. Her stand-up looked decent. Once again, she almost... It was kind of like Bruna Allen. It's just kind of sloppy. She get countered a lot of times. She stayed in the pocket for too long. Overall grappling didn't look too bad either. Uh, Ducati, uh, two and one record with both wins by decision. Twenty three years old. She's five two on a two fight win streak. Trains out of ATT OKC. Um, I saw one of her fights. Her stand up didn't look very good, but her wrestling looked 
pretty solid. And overall, like, grappling game looked pretty good. Uh, but yeah, all I can really say is that she had good wrestling. I want to say she might have a wrestling... I don't know if this is... Because I was watching some video on YouTube, and there's someone named... I don't, someone with the same name that was having a couple wrestling matches, but, like, I couldn't tell if that's the same person or not. Uh, I don't think it was, but I'm not too sure. She was also from, like, uh, around that same area, so it could be. Nonetheless, um... I would imagine that Bellator would want to push Bruna Vargas, but, like, I don't know if she has any type of really good grappling skills to deal with Dukai. And Dukai's, uh stand-up didn't look good, but she did have a good takedown game. So I'll go with Emily Ducati to win that one. And next about that, LJ Hamrick fights Gaston uh, Tonga Renault. I have not seen any video footage of Hamrick. All I know is he has a 3-1 record with all three wins by sub and his one loss by sub. He's a finisher who's never been past the second round. Uh, Gaston right now, 5-1 record with two no contests, two wins by KO Tico, three wins by sub. 29 years old, he's 5'10", trains out of glory, MMA and fitness with the likes of... Uh, it's actually some... James Kraus. It's like Kraus's gym, if I'm not mistaken. Um... And there are some other good guys out of that gym. Megan Anderson trains there now. And gosh, there's that huge Walter weight that just be um uh Zach Zach Cummings. Yeah, Zach Cummings. Um that train out of there. Um so right now I've seen video of him actually. I uh, most recently lost to Chuka Willis. Got taken down a bunch of times. But his stand up's actually pretty good. His offensive takedown ability actually isn't too bad, and he has good ground and pound. With that said, I'll go with Gaston Reynaud to win that one. Next fight after that, have not seen video of these guys. Manuel Moraz fights Trey Ogden. Moraz, 8-2 record, 2 wins by Kertiko, 3 wins by Sub. He's 6 foot, training, and he's trading wins and losses. Trey Ogden, 5-1 record, 4 wins by Sub, 1 win by decision, 3 fight win streak. Go with Trey Ogden to win that one. Next fight after that, Matt Foster fights Chris Harris. Foster, 6-8 and eight record, 1-1 one, one by Tico, 3 wins by sub. That's just 2 losses by KO Tico and 4 losses by sub. 31 years old, he's 6 foot on a 3 fight losing streak. Chris Harris, 6-0 and eight undefeated record, 5 wins by KO Tico, 1 win by decision, he's 5-11. I like his stand up, he has some power in his strikes as well. Um, I gotta go with Chris Harris to win that one. <clears throat> Next fight after that, I've seen Marshall Navarro, but I haven't seen... Fernando Martinez. So Martinez, 14 and 10 record with one draw. Four wins by Kertiko, five wins by sub. He also has two losses by Kertiko and four losses by sub. 36 years old, he's 5'8, training out of glory MMA and fitness. Marcio Navarro, 14 and 12 record, four wins by Kertiko, five wins by sub. He also has four losses by Kertiko and three losses by sub. 37 years old, he's six foot. Um. Navarro's like this guy that Bellator seems to put, constantly put him onto prelims. He seems to be this like good journey, good hand, kind of a journeyman type fighter. Can do a little bit of everything, but not doesn't particularly excel at any one aspect of MMA. So with that said, I'll go with uh, Fernando Martinez and win that one. Next fight after that, Johnny Marigo fights Andy Riley. Have not seen video of any of these guys. Uh, so Marigo, 1-0 record with that one win by decision. Andy Riley, 2-1 record, 1-1 by TKO, 1-1 by sub. He's a finisher. I'll go with Andy Riley to win that one. Next fight after that, Henry, Henry Rome Lindsay fights Josh Pfeiffer. Lindsay, 5-5 five five record, 2 wins by KO Tico, 2 wins by sub. All 5 of his losses are by submission. He's 31 years old, he's 5-9, trading wins and losses. So, this guy, all of his losses are by sub, right? Josh Pfeiffer, he's 4-2 with all four of his wins by sub. <laughs> um, with one loss by K or T count, one loss by sub. He's 5'10 and a finisher with no decisions. I'll go Josh Pfeiffer to win that one. And finally, Chuka the Lion King Willis fights Brandon Phillips. Brandon Phillips, actually this should be a good fight. Phillips, 5-1 on one record, 4 wins by K or T count, 1 win by sub. 26 years old, he's 5'5, five five, trains out of ATTOKC and he's a finisher. Uh, so he's a prospect in his own right. 
Uh, Chico Willis, 8-2 and two record, 4 wins by KO TKO, 2 wins by Sub, 23 years old, he's 5'11 on a 4-fight win streak, trains out of ATT HD. Um, I like what Willis' wrestling and ground and pound game, uh, That's to me that seems like the strength of his game. Uh, his stand-up is weak, but I think it is improving. Uh, with that said, I'll go Chuka Willis to win that one. Okay, to recap. Uh, and uh, Darian Caldwell versus Joe Taimanglo fight. I have Darian Caldwell winning by submission. David Rickles versus Melvin Gillard. I have David Rickles by KO or TKO. Emmanuel Sanchez versus Daniel Vichel. I have Daniel Vichel by decision. Felipe Lenz versus Guillermo Viana of Viana by KRTK. And Bruna Allen versus Jessica Middleton of Bruna Allen by decision. And the prelims of Emily Ducati over Bruna Vargas. Gaston Reynal over LJ Hemrick. Trey Ogden over Manuel Moraz. Chris Foster beating Matt Foster. Or Chris Harris beating Matt Foster. My bad. Uh, Fernando Martinez over Marcia Navarro. Andy Riley over Johnny Marigo, Josh Pfeiffer beating Henry Lindsay, and Chuka Willis over Brandon Phillips. So that's it for my predictions for Bellator 159, Caldwell versus Timinglo. If you have any comments, just leave them below. Um, and also, please uh, support me and my journey of being an author by buying one of my stories. Uh, you can buy The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom for $4.99 at www.chrismondon.com or if you have an e-reader you can buy it off of amazon.com you can also buy uh, some of my short stories for $1.99 like the land of the wooden statues my horror collection or my fantasy fable collection so uh, that's pretty much it for uh, these for MMA for you thank you guys very much